legendary Marine and our 2015 Regal 2700. We're going to start by walking on the boat, showing you exactly what to do, the features of the boat, and to give an idea about the navigation and the GPS system. So come with me. First thing you want to do when you're stepping on the boat is realize that both seats would lift. Left seat we use for a cooler. And there's ice inside at the moment. There's a drain plug that you would unscrew at the end of the evening to make sure the water drains out. Just turn the lid upside down and allow the water to drain after you've removed all your belongings. In the right side pocket, you're gonna have your rear anchor. This anchor just comes right out. And this is what you're gonna to attach to the rear cleat of the boat. So when you're sitting out at Crab Island, you can anchor the back end while the front end's anchored so the boat doesn't sway. Once you put this back in, you can carefully close the lid or close the seat cushion. Then I'll point out that we have the gas cap. We have the mechanism in which you can lift the rear. If you had to gain access to the battery, just push down. Once you push this button until the rear is safely lifted, you would be able to gain access to your two batteries, which were changed in June of 2020. Your coolant fluid is good, and your fresh water tank is full. So if you ever had to gain access for whatever reason, this would be the way to do it. I'm gonna put this back down, point out that there is a rear stereo. Whenever you're in transit, you wouldn't use this radio, of course, because you don't wanna be on the swim deck while the boat's in motion. But when you made it to your destination, be it Crab Island or an area where you were going to beach the motor anchor down or more, you could use this button by just hitting the power button. You would have access to the volume, you would have access to the zone speakers, and you would also be able to change your music. Come with me. You can step on. If you needed to rinse off before going to dinner, you just reach into this pocket or this little access panel and you would pull out the shower would use that if you wanted to rinse off. Again, you have to turn on the water pump and I'll show you where that is over by the driver's seat. This is the access uh, mounting pad for the for the uh, barbecue pit. And again, we're on the swim platform. So we before we enter the boat, back up. We want to remove our shoes and we want to place those shoes in this rear hatch. So let everyone know it says bare feet only, naked feet only here. And that means take your shoes off before you get on the boat. Preferably before you can step on the swim platform. If you join me on the boat, you'll notice that you have USB ports or an access for a cigarette lighter to put USBs. And we have those in the glove compartment for your use. Under the port side or starboard side of the boat, you would see the batteries. You would notice there in the all position, that's on startup, and that's when you're moving from one location to another. Once you're at your destination, you wanna move it to battery one. If you're gonna stay somewhere for a long period of time and you don't need your radio, turn the batteries off. That's the last thing you'll do before you exit the boat in the evening. Once you're in a location, you wanna power on battery one for your entertainment, music, water pumps, and move it back to all whenever you're ready to move again. That'll recharge your battery one when you're in motion and transit. You'll use battery two for emergencies. Battery all will access both, so you'll always be safe on getting your way home. Inside here we have the fire extinguisher. We have a small toolbox, and you'll see that in this side we have all of the adult life jackets and, and even some youth. Life jackets, here's the mount where the table would go. And we'll show you where that is under this other pocket. So on the port side of the boat, you'll see that you have more life jackets and you have bumpers that are all stored back in, stored back in the back side. That's where you want to store those. You have a rope for tie down in case you're uh, going to moor somewhere. You have your handle, which extends in case you're going to get to a dock and it's kind of uh, windy out and you can't get access. Just unscrew this, pull it out, twist to tighten it. And you would use this to grab a dock and pull yourself in. You would have someone do this while you're steering the boat. Twist it back, 
allow it to come down and secure. In this pocket, we also have a football for the kids. We have propane for the barbecue pit. We have Frisbees, extra rope for tie down, goggles for snorkeling, small net for kids fishing, or for kids playing with fish. And this is the mount for the uh, barbecue pit. It would screw in and then you would pop on your barbecue pit on top of that. So where's the barbecue pit? You would, you would lift this seat. And notice one thing, I didn't drop the seat down. I slowly lowered it. The more and more people continue to drop that, it puts wear and tear on those, on the brackets in the back or the hinges. In this pocket, you'll have some covers that you don't worry about. You'll have your cooking utensils. And in the bottom, under this zipper, can you see in here, Nico? You'll have your barbecue pit. This barbecue pit lifts from the, the propane side up, lift it straight out, and then you would mount that on the rear deck. You have a pole that's right in here, and that's for the table that would be mounted in case you want to use that table for eating. And the table itself is back over on the port side against this inside bulkhead. You would unstrap it, take it out, and you would mount it. That brings us up to the control panel. You're going to have your ignition. You're going to have your throttle. These are your trim tabs for balancing left and right while you're in motion if you have an unbalanced crew. You'll have your through hole exhaust, which you, if you want it to be extra loud and get some attention, you can use that or not leave it off. Your fresh water pump when you're going to utilize the rear shower or the head, make sure you turn it on for use. When you're all done, turn it back off. And your underwater lights, if you're in transit at nighttime, it, uh, it, really, it really looks gorgeous on the back of the boat. Here you'll have your tower up, which you won't need to move your tower. Your bilge pump, if you had too much water in the back. Your blower, if you're going to fuel. The boat's normally fully fueled when you get on. Your horn. Then you're going to have your windshield wipers, docking lights, cockpit lights would be your fluorescent blue lights that light up at night, your LEDs as you were. And then your nav if you're traveling at night or if you're moored somewhere. Again, ignition, turn it till your beeping's gone. And then you would handle the ignition. If you want it to be a little louder, you would turn on your through hole exhaust and turn it back off. You'll notice that I need a little work. This one has a position indicator that's blinking, but it still operates. Whatever side of the boat is high, if your left side is high, use this to push the boat down. If the right side's high, use this to push that side down. Your radio will fire up. Pretty self-explanatory when you're moving from AM, FM, Bluetooth, Facebook, and allowing someone to uh, power up their boat or their radio. This is going to have you select, go to Bluetooth, click this button, it's going to say loading, you click your page button, it's still setting itself up, while that's happening I'll move it up where it has your radio, you'll use this for your button for your nav your nav button so you can see your navigation see your gauges for speed you don't need to use this one if it ever says on in the middle you won't be to accelerate make sure you click this one and turn it off your engine will show you all the parameters of the boat speedometer your trim which it's on 31 we'll start trimming that down that should be a little bit lower now well, I guess we could leave it up until they leave the harbor um, your home button will get you back to the main screen you can see your data bar at the bottom if you want to show that. And then uh, music if you want to go back to the radio stations and move music around. Now it's saying select a device. Click the button and you can go to whatever phone is already connected. If no phone is connected, you'll have to go discoverable. Click that button and then have it find your phone. Remember, it's UD755 is our code. It won't say Fusion, at least I don't believe, but I tried to name it different because everyone else will pop up Fusion and you'll try to connect to 15 boats in the area. So UD755.
is what you would use. Back to the GPS. GPS, you can zoom in. There's already maps that'll show you where to go. If you want to get to Crab Island, and you could use this to navigate your way out of the marina and over to Crab Island, if that's where you wanted to go. You can see the black trail marks there. We'll zoom back in. The more detailed mapping would be on our Garmin, which I'll show you just, just one second. Let me get this one in as far as I can go because it only zooms in so far. We'll pop this cover off on the bottom. When you power it up, it's gonna give you a beep and you're gonna have to set your depth. Wait for it to pop up. Still loading. Okay, agree. You hit the agree button, so. And it's gonna say change alarm. You go up to that, press up, select, select change depth, and I'd say leave it at two. We'll go ahead and hit select. Point oh six, select, and then if you want to use your charts, you'll hit select. It should be on charts already. Navigation chart select, and now it's going to allow you to zoom in and out to give you a very, very good detailed reading of where you're at. You want to make sure that you stay out of the areas that say two and threes. On this one, you want to stay in the areas that are white. Limit yourself to going into the blue because that'll put you at risk. It's very shallow water. So we're gonna go ahead and put the cover of the Garmin back on until we get to where we're going. Glove compartment access, <coughs> binoculars, chargers, suntan lotion, fuses in case you need fuses and a whistle for help. In the restroom, which is the latch on the bottom, reach over, click this up, and pull it open. You'll have access to your restroom. <coughs> got a vacuum flush system what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and close this window until the boat gets to its location later today they can open it up and let it air out in here and then this is your vacuum switch so whenever you have the water on and you're ready to flush the restroom you're gonna go ahead and click this down at the top to turn it on when you're done make sure you turn it off or it'll burn that pump up when it's on you'll hold this down until the water flushes through and then let it up. You use it with your foot, your hand, your preference. There's toilet paper there. There's an emergency first aid kit down in the bottom drawer. And some cleaning materials and additional rest of toilet paper. All right, that clears up the head. Moving to the front. You have an access panel on the right hand side. It's gonna have your youth in children life jackets as well as all your emergency life jackets and your throwable which is required by the coast guard you also have your flare gun with four shots which is required by the lifeguard then you're going to have an additional four flare kits that are needed which you won't be out at night so chances are you'll never need those close that up if you're in transit and you want to close the window you could always open this up and use this to close that way you can block wind from coming inside we'll leave that back out of the way in the front on the starboard side you'll put your finger right into this pocket pull this up and there's where the cover of the boat is and again access to the life jackets you have additional speakers up front cup holders under this pocket is where you can put extra food, water, it's an additional storage spot, as well as under the front seat cushion, which is a small cooler that you could use for, look at that, Gatorade, drinks. Apparently someone left their drinks on. Front anchor on how to let it out and pull it in. Not hooked up at the moment, it's the windlass. We're waiting for a new motor to come in, but this is how you would deploy your anchor. This is how you would bring it in. Your front ladder that you would only use if you're beaching for dinner somewhere this locks in the chain for now we have a rope 
and we have the anchor you pull that out throw your anchor the way you would a traditional boat with no windless anchor and you put it on this front cleat and you'll be perfectly fine last thing refrigerator right under the seat of the passenger extremely cold put the drinks for the uh, children ladies and have good access your bumpers again always make sure those are removed and they're stowed back under the port side seat you can see that we're tied up you can see that we have bumpers on this side uh, not tied well at all but they're there all right I think that wraps it up um, we'll probably put together another video that has a little more detail um, and answer additional questions if you may have. Thanks a lot.